All right, hello everyone and welcome to Science at Home. My name is Anna Taylor and today we're talking to Edward Snowden, or Ted, uh, who is a PhD student at the observatory. So hi Ted, how are you? Hello, uh, yeah I'm doing well thanks. I hope everybody Brilliant. else is doing well as well. All right, so are you happy enough just to dive right in? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure, sure. Brilliant. So uh, where are you from and how did you get to be here in Armagh? Yeah, so I come from um, a place called Teesside in the northeast of England. Um, and so I initially went to I went to uh, the University of York uh, and I studied physics, uh, physics and astrophysics there. Um, I did did a, a undergraduate degree and a master's degree there. And then um, I apply, I then decided to move on to do a PhD study. And so when I was applying for PhDs, I kind of decided I didn't want to stay in England for a PhD um, because kind of part of the research experience is um, it's quite common that, you know, it, it's quite international. You might move about. Yeah. Um, and so part of the experience I wanted for my PhD is that place of going somewhere, somewhere new, um, somewhere perhaps a little bit unfamiliar. Um, so I didn't apply to anywhere yeah. in England, um, but I applied to say some in Scotland, um, a couple in in like Europe in the continent, and of course uh, to Armagh as well. Um, and I ended up um, choosing Armagh because um, the project uh, I got offered was very interesting, and the institution is quite unique. Uh, and uh, yeah, so those were the main reasons. So that's how I ended up here. <laughs> And I've been Brilliant. here since October of last year. Fab. How are you getting on with your PhD? Is it? Yeah, we're getting. I mean, um, the the whole you know lockdown stuff did uh, kind of cause a, a few problems, but I mean, we can still carry on work, uh, you know, in isolation at home. Um, and yeah, the pr progress is uh, is good so far. I've actually just recently had my first year differentiation viva where I basically present um, the work so far to to AOP and to uh, Queens uh, and they decided I'm allowed to, to carry on going so I guess it's oh. going well. Stressful. <laughs> uh, it was a little bit but yeah, it's, it's all done with now. So uh, can you explain briefly the type of research that you do? What, um, what is your project? Yeah so uh, I um, I, I'm into kind of stellar um, astronomy and astrophysics, so focusing on stars in particular. Um, and my project uh, focuses on what we call hot subdwarf stars, which are these unusual stars that are kind of they're, they're like the left behind remnants from a giant star that's had all of its kind of outer layers stripped away. So if you imagine, it's kind of like it used it used to be just the core of this big star but now it's kind of there on its own. Um, and these we study these stars um, spectroscopically. So we look at kind of spectra of the, the light from these stars, and it can tell us all sorts of things about, you know, how hot they are, um, how what they're made of. Um, and we can use that information to infer things like, oh, how did they form? Or um, you know, is there anything unusual about them? Um, how how are their what are their internal workings like? And so yeah, that's what we're we're focusing on at the moment. Brilliant. Find anything interesting? Um, well, so far we're just kind of setting the groundwork. So again, I'm only in in, uh, in first yeah. year. <laughs> uh, we've got we've got uh, got one star in particular on the go right now that we're, we're analysing, and it's. Uh, uh, we're about to about to move on to kind of figuring out what what um, chemical elements it's made of. That's the next step. Brilliant. So, um, when a lot of people think of astronomy, obviously they think of telescopes. Have you used telescopes for your research a lot or uh, at all? Yeah. Well, we uh, our data that we use these these spectra that I mentioned they they do come from a telescope. They come from the Southern African Large Telescope, which is in South Africa, um, and in particular, we have two uh, instruments on this telescope that we use. We have um, kind of a low resolution spectrum that's good for classifying stars, and then a high resolution spectrum that's good for the more the more detailed work. Uh, so that's that's yeah. Um, so I mean, I personally haven't been down to South Africa to use the telescope myself, but we do have you know you you um 
you write proposals and apply for time on the telescope and then the team down there does the actual um, data collection and then they send it back yeah. to us and we, we analyse it. Brilliant. So what is the most difficult part of your research so far? So I think yeah, it's it's a bit funny to say, actually, because I would say it's actually dealing with these spectra. And it's funny to say that because that's kind of the entire point, um, so the entire point <laughs> for hard work. But so the thing about stars is that pretty much the only way we can get any information about any star at all, except maybe the sun, is by looking at the light we get from it. And so a major way you can do that is is spectra. And so if you imagine the stellar spectrum, when you look at them, they basically look a bit like a barcode. It's just kind of like uh, a sort of series of bright and dark lines. Mm -hmm. And from that, astronomers, from that sort of data, astronomers have, that's how we figured out almost everything we know about stars. And so okay. what that means is basically when you're dealing with these spectra, there's a lot of moving parts, you know, these lines are being affected by temperature and by gravity and by rotation. And by, so it's kind of like it's it's like detective work, basically. You're, you're looking at what doesn't really look like a huge amount of information, but you can infer so much from it. And so you have to be very careful when you're doing that. that you're not going down the wrong track um, or, or making any mistakes. OK, that sounds really interesting. But yeah, could be tricky, I'm sure. Um, so have you always loved astronomy? Did you, from when you were a little kid, did you like looking at the sky, thinking about things like that? Or did yeah, you? So, so, so yes and no. So I say yes in the sense that, you know, I was always thought, you know, as a, when I was, uh, when I was a kid, you know, that space was, was just really cool, which I think is kind of on the same fundamental level. I think most people do. I don't think there's many people in the world where you could take them out and look at this, like a beautiful, clear, dark night sky and they just go. <sighs> Boring. I wonder what's on, <laughs> I wonder what's on telly tonight. Yeah, I don't think there's very many people who would like, be totally uninterested like that, but, um, as opposed to like when it comes to actual like astronomy, so actually doing study, um, that more came in when I was applying for university and it basically came down to I had two choices. I, I knew I wanted to do something sciencey, but I didn't know exactly what. And so it came down to either going to Newcastle to study chemistry um, or York to study physics. And I saw, oh, but York also has this astrophysics program and they have an, uh, an observatory at the university that the students can can use and stuff. And so I thought, oh, that that's kind of that's really interesting and that is what tipped me to going to going there um, and then yeah. kind of through the study you know as doing the study that's when it's a, you that's when you discover that basically you're, you're working it's like problem solving except the problems you solve then teach you how you know the entire universe works <laughs> um, and once once you kind of get into get into that sort of thing that gets kind of addictive honestly um if in, in a way you get yeah. more into something and learn more about it it just becomes even more interesting well, then, the more you learn the more you realize that there is to learn and you real and so yeah. then you want to go and learn all that stuff as well and then <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay so um have you been many places in doing your research um you're saying you haven't been to south africa itself but <laughs> yeah. have you ever been like on conferences or anything like that yeah, so I've been to a couple of conferences, um, basically in the UK and in Ireland. Um, it's kind of unfortunate, which is particularly I've just started the PhD quite recently, and then this whole lockdown thing has kind of put a stop to most travel. So perhaps yeah. that, you know, um, messed up things a little bit. But um, I think in the so in the future in particular, there's going to be opportunities. Like I think there's a big conference uh, in Germany next year that I might be going to. Um, and again, there's, there's possibilities I might go down to South Africa or somewhere like that for the telescope, um, maybe. Uh, so yeah, there's it, not yet really. I've not really been anywhere particularly exotic yet, but it's definitely on the cards, I think, at some yeah. point. <laughs> we'll see. Is there anywhere in particular you'd really like to go? Yeah, well, again, South Africa would be nice. I've been to South Africa once when I was really, really little, um, and I'd like okay. to go again. Um, and also... A lot of these, I think, um, you you find a lot of the kind of institutes that do 
work relating to my research. They're in places like um, America. Um, there's quite a few in Europe, I think in Germany and in Poland. You see quite a few from Poland, I think. Uh, so, okay. yeah, there's like several places in Europe, several places in America and, and in Africa. So it's, it's again, because astronomy is so worldwide and international, um, there's all kinds of, of, of opportunities, really. Absolutely. It sounds like you've got an exciting future ahead of you. Well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you chose to study science. You were saying that you were sort of between two sciences even. Do you think it's important that people should consider science as a future career? Oh, absolutely. Um, and I think I think one of the, the biggest benefits you get from, from studying science or from working in science um, is I think a lot of people think, oh, you know, you go become a scientist, you know, you'll you'll learn a lot of facts, you learn a lot of theories, but um, which is true. But I think the more important thing that it teaches you is basic is you know this this like framework and way of thinking thinking about things scientifically, you know, to to look at, at evidence and information and interpret that um, and come up with you know strong conclusions um, that you can yes. justify and back up and that kind of thinking you can apply to to anything like you can people apply scientific thinking to you know like sports um and to to like linguistics and language um history art even i think so i think yeah people people should consider science as a career and I think the consideration goes beyond what a lot of people may just think, you know, like people in lab coats, you know, shaking beakers around. It's it can be so much more than that if you want to. I mean, I've not worn a lab coat in years and I'm not allowed to shake beakers because I'd probably drop them and break and spill everywhere. So. <laughs> OK, well, thank you very much, Ted. This has been a, an awesome interview. I learned quite a lot from it, especially about the spectra. That's a really interesting yeah, it's good uh, point there and you explained it really well so thank you very much um i'm going to say goodbye to everyone who's watching thank you very much for tuning in if you'd like to uh subscribe to our channel that would be absolutely brilliant it's arma observatory and planetarium as i'm sure you can see from this video um and if you like us on social media um you'll find our videos coming out every day at the minute all right so thanks very much everyone and thanks ted thank Bye. you goodbye